G'day, I'm Rob Malicki and welcome to A Life That Travels and today I'm at the University of Sydney, one of Australia's most prestigious institutions. And in this video, we're gonna be taking a look around the university, talking to some students about what it's like to study here. And by the end of this video, you'll understand how the University of Sydney ranks, the kinds of subjects that are available here and have a better idea about whether or not you should be coming here to study. Um, is this going to be good information for you? Yes, absolutely. I've been working in the Australian higher education sector for over 20 years, so this is going to be great information for you. Let's get started. Well, the university was founded in 1850, so it was the first university founded in Australia, and as you can see here, there is a lot of sandstone in this place. The oldest universities in Australia are collectively called the sandstone universities because, well, the oldest buildings basically are made out of the stuff. And one of the things that I've loved about the University of Sydney, I came here 15, 20 years ago for the first time, is just how much the place has changed. You've you've got this incredible balance between like the old sandstone and these absolutely brand spanking new sparkling buildings that are full of the latest technology. So it's an institution that's got a very rich history but that also has moved with the times and that's in so many different ways. It's not just in terms of the buildings but also in terms of the technology, the teaching and the research that it does here. It's an institution that has certainly adapted throughout the ages. Well, the university does have this main campus here in Darling, Darlington and uh, most of the main disciplines are taught here but as an institution that's so old and has such a huge footprint on society it does have a number of satellite campuses all over the place so Cumberland is one of the main ones where you find a lot of the health science disciplines um, and then you know there's astronomy which has its own little uh, research facility this place literally has um, sites scattered all over the place Definitely one of the advantages for the university is its location so close to the centre of Sydney, which you can see just in the background here. But one of the downsides is that it doesn't actually have its own um, train line. There's been a big push from the institution over many years to try and get a train line or a tram line essentially coming directly to the institution, but they haven't managed to succeed from that. So people coming into the university, stream into the university, have actually walked um, up from Redfern, which is one of the nearest stations, or from Central. Of course, there are plenty of buses available as well out on the main road, which is King Street running down to Newtown. One of the things I've loved about the University of Sydney over the years that I've been coming here for a long time uh, is the fact that there are just so many places to, to eat and hang out before uh, and after class. So awesome coffee places, awesome bars and food and eateries. And whether you're on campus or you get out off campus down into to Glebe or Newtown, um, there's always plenty of places just to go and hang out and spend time. Well, this is one of the most famous views at the University of Sydney, the Quadrangle Building. And uh, once you graduate from this place, you actually graduate in there and I think they still actually have function spaces and maybe even some classes in there too. The university is actually home to something like 60,000 students, about 35,000 undergraduate students, 25,000 postgraduates and of those postgrads it's almost 5,000 students taking PhD doctorate degrees so it's a very very large institution. Supporting that about five and a half thousand staff. So it's a very large institution and it's one of the reasons why the university actually ranks so incredibly well. If you basically look at any ranking, it's in the top couple of institutions in all of Australia, up there with the University of Melbourne as well as the Australian National University. And pretty much all of the disciplines that you look at have got areas of strength on the individual rankings. Now, of course, when it comes to rankings, what I like to say is always look into the detail because um, there are so many different ranking schemes out there and you can absolutely find uh, you know, a ranking that will confirm whether or not a, uh, a particular discipline area that you want to study in is, um, is well ranked or not. And rankings can be a little bit misleading because University of Sydney, one of the top 25 
to 40 universities in the world, depending on which ranking you're looking at. But in individual areas, maybe it's not as strong for the thing that you want to study, or maybe it's even stronger still. So definitely always look into the details of the area that you want to study to make sure that it fits you. Now, the best source of information for Australian or for students thinking about coming to study at an Australian university like UCID is actually the Australian government's quality indicators of learning and teaching um, website, Quilt, and I'll drop the uh, URL down below. This website is basically um, a place where you can get Australian government data, student satisfaction data for every institution in the country. So you can see not only how well the University of Sydney um, scores from students who've actually studied here, but you can also drill down into the discipline areas that you're potentially thinking of studying at and find out whether or not students had a good experience here. Were they then able to get jobs on the back of it? Um, and all of the uh, in important information that you need. It really is impressive to walk through the Quadrangle building. There's so much history in this place. And, you know, famously, you're not actually allowed to walk on the grass, except on the day that you graduate. So it's one of those uh, time-honored traditions of Australia's oldest university. You don't get to walk on the grass in the quadrangle until the day you graduate. Something special about that, isn't there? For over, you know, 150, 160, 170 years, graduates of this institution have been walking on the grass. <laughs> This is the Manning Building. The Manning Building is the University of Sydney Student Union, which is one of the most organised uh, student unions in the entire country. Um, and a number of Prime Ministers and Premiers who've led the uh, Sydney University Student Union. It's one of those hotbeds of political activity. So certainly if you want to get into politics, this is one place to come and bloody yourself on, on the brutal sport of, uh, of Australian politics. The university has 11 separate libraries across this main campus and the satellite campuses as well. This one here is Fisher Library that I'm in front of. The student Union runs an absolutely huge range of activities. It's one of the most organised um, student unions in the entire country, meaning heaps of clubs and societies available for you to get involved in if you choose to come and study here, basically covering every sort of discipline, every sort of interest that you could possibly imagine. So definitely if you're interested in extracurricular stuff, getting involved in some of the activities of the student union, clubs and societies, you're going to have more than enough uh, choice here at the University of Sydney to last you several lifetimes. One of the things you do need to be aware of um, at the University of Sydney is around student satisfaction. So on the quality indicators of learning and teaching, the Quilt website, you can find that the university ranks actually below the national average in terms of student satisfaction in many, many areas. Um, so the national average in overall satisfaction for teaching and learning and their overall experience at the university is 80. And the University of Sydney, including in many academic disciplines, actually comes in underneath the national average. Now the thing to remember about these rankings is that they're impacted by things like the size of the institution. So a university like Sydney, which is a huge institution, you know, maybe students are getting less of the um, hand-holding effect. They're getting less personal um, service and less personalised attention and therefore those kind of student satisfaction ratings may be a little bit lower than you might expect at smaller or more niche institutions. Tell me what it's like to, to be a student here. Um, on the whole, it's pretty good, mm -hmm. I have to admit. I'll give credit where credit's due, on the whole, it's pretty good. Um, for me, I'm someone from Western Sydney, mm -hmm. so I, when I actually got here, I got here through scholarship. Cool. Um, and I was told by the teachers straight away that we might not be liked by other students, mm. but the teachers like us because we're hard workers. And I went, okay, that was a little bit of a strange start, but sometimes you kind of, you can feel if you're different but it's not a bad thing. I mean, on the whole, people are really nice. Um, the teachers are really accommodating. Um, I think, I think though, there's a lot of things that could be really improved, um, especially student support mm -hmm. and the infrastructure, because here, your teachers care. Like, they're good teachers, they're good at what they do, and they care about you. So what's, what's the atmosphere like here on campus? Very relaxed. Yeah? It is a very relaxed university, mm -hmm. I have to admit, but in a good way. Like, it's, um, 
Tell me yes. more. Why, why do you why do you why do you think it's very relaxed? What kind of gives that impression? Like we're in this like really nice place. Yeah. You know, there's heaps of open spaces, good nice cafes, sunshine. sunshine, sunshine as well. Um, like I think they've definitely accommodated where they've built the buildings and the open spaces mm -hmm. for kind of the atmosphere as well. Yeah. I mean, if you get to because all right, if you're at university, you will be studying to late hours of the night. Um, you become best friends within your library with like your seat that you like because you'll be there <laughs> um, and it's true but I remember to this day I love going up to level six in one of the libraries because you can see the Anzac Bridge. Oh very nice. Because it just the height of this building and nothing else blocks it you can just see it and it's beautiful. Awesome. Um, it kind of reminds you there's hope on the outside at whatever time it is at night that you're trying to finish this essay. Nice. But um, like that's the thing campus is there's a lot of green space though they're definitely accommodated for that and I think that's good. Is it easy getting here? Because there is no mainline train that sort of stops at the university. No. I think it depends on where you're from. Mm -hmm. um, for me I have quite a long journey, I've been an hour and a half mm -hmm. each way um, and that's it, that's door to door. Um, but basically if you go from, if you catch the train to Central and catch the bus and then take you straight up Parramatta Road, towards yep. Parramatta Road um, or Redfern, it's about a 15 minute walk to the centre of campus. Okay. So it's not too bad. And if you're staying here late at night, the main library that's open 24 hours has a shuttle bus to Redfern. Ah. So I thought that was quite good. That's good. They're really big on societies, all these clubs host different events. They've got a theatre here, they've got, you, there's a gym you can join if you're into fitness. There's um, a few, there's a bar, I think there's like three bars. <laughs> um, I think, yeah, there's definitely something for everybody. There's a lot of, there's hangout spaces. Like, I think they're really good. There's nap pods. That's oh. handy. I also love the fact in New Sid that, you know, Newtown, right there. Yep. Glebe, just over here. It's, yep. Um, CBD, Chinatown, not far away. So, plenty of options It's here. pretty close to a lot of things. Yeah. I mean, no matter where you are, um, you can really, like, you've got options, mm. I think. Even if you finished uni late, you can go out. Um, you know, like, I think you've got... You've always got an option, yeah. which is good. Yeah. The libraries are great. Um, you know, that most of them I think they're open 24 by 7, which yep. is really helpful if you are someone that's working part time and you know you're taking either night classes and your postgraduate degree, um, or you know you're sort of trying to juggle a part time job with um, full time uni. So that was really helpful for me, and I think it's great that you know you can. There's lots of little areas where you know you can heat up your food. You can you know there's water all over the campus. Um, just things like that that make, you know, just if you're going to spend the whole day here, it makes life a little bit easier, which is what I had to do for my science degree. Um, you know, it was, I couldn't just come in with like one handbag, it was like a backpack <laughs> for the day, um, you know, with food and everything. And it's, look, it's close by to Central Station, you get one to one bus from Central, um, you know, it's a 10, 20, 15 minute bus ride, so it was pretty easy. And I, like the grounds and campuses are really, really nice. Like, it's Super beautiful. pretty. Yeah, isn't the it? facilities are really, yep. really top notch and they're always constantly. Um, building new mm. facilities as well, which is really nice. A bit unfortunate that some of the best sort of came out after I left, but <laughs> it's great to see a lot of the buildings being updated as well. Sydney University has like an O week okay. leading up to, I think, before classes start, and they have stalls set up of all the different clubs and societies that you can join, and there's like pretty much everything, like mm. from drama to chocolate society to science societies, everything. So signing up to that was just a Chocolate good, society. There is, yeah, it was great. Um, they actually used to have little stalls where you could then have like chocolate pancakes and things like that. If you were a member, you could get it for free. And then if it was like, if you weren't a member, it was like $2. So it was that really good. That sounds like a really good investment. It was great, like, that's what I thought too. Right? I thought, exactly, yeah, it was really good. You often see people doing campaigns. I think towards the end of the year, they always do the different campaigns and you know, you get to vote for who you'd like to yeah. be sort of representing um, students in different aspects. But um, yeah, no, it's really good. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Let's talk a little bit more about rankings. The university not only ranks extremely well in Australia, top two or three usually, um, in the broad rankings, but in discipline rankings, um, ranks very strongly in Australia, pretty much across the board in the top you know, handful of institutions, almost in every discipline across the board, as well as in the top 40 or 50. For many, many disciplines, there are so many um, that I can't even start to count. Uh, and you can check all of those out on the University of Sydney's website. They're very good at, at, at promoting that. One of the standouts for me though, is that in one of the um, rankings of graduate employability, the QS rankings of graduate employability, the University of Sydney actually ranks number one in Australia and number five in the world in terms of graduate employability. So if you're looking to get a job, coming to this place is probably a good move.
Well, I've really enjoyed my time here at University of Sydney this morning. Great walk around. The campus is looking absolutely amazing. The university really has invested in some fantastic new infrastructure. And that contrast between like the history of the old um, buildings and the new facilities that they have here, it just really has a super nice vibe to it, these open spaces. Plenty of opportunities for students in terms of clubs and societies and overseas study and opportunities outside the classroom. They're definitely there. Of course, as a very large university, it is one of those places where you are going to have to be a little bit more proactive in seeking out those opportunities for that from some of the students. Great time here at University of Sydney and I can tell you what, if I had a chance to study here, I think I would be very happy indeed. I'm Rob Malicki. It's been great chatting with you and I'll see you next time on a life of travels. See you later.